You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined today by Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you today? I'm doing good today, sir. How about yourself? I'm doing great. So I asked Ricky to come on today. We record the Higher Calling podcast together. So if you haven't listened to that, please check it out. It's really aimed at employers and anyone who needs to hire talent. Uh, and we give advice uh, along those lines. But Ricky mentioned something to me today, and I thought, wow, we really need to come on uh, the Zen Gig podcast and talk about that. And that is quiet quitting. Uh, so just uh, uh, by way of background, Ricky is an HR consultant and a longtime HR professional. He's the HR director for my staffing business, Four Corner Resources, and he's a professor at Rollins College, where this topic came up in class this week. So, <laughs> Ricky, we we have to talk about this this new phrase, perhaps trend, if 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 it if it is such quiet <laughs> quitting. I'll I'll call it a trend. That's what I'll call it. Um, so that that you know, a couple of years ago, the big trend, the big um, a phrase was the Great Resignation, right? And that was, I it, it's it wasn't partly fueled by the pandemic because it started right before the pandemic, but it gave it a lot of traction. And now it's what we're seeing is the new trend of quiet quitting, which at face value it means this: it means that you just as an employee, you're just showing up to work doing just enough to what your job description says, nothing more, nothing less. And from what I understand, because I'm still taking a deep dive into this for the, for the, for the past couple of weeks, from, from what I understand, this is a general position that some employers have taken, employees have taken, because they feel that it doesn't matter how much they do, they don't get paid appropriately and they don't get promotions and I'm here to say that it's 100% wrong. <laughs> it is 100% wrong. So quiet quitting isn't quitting. It is when you do the bare minimum and that's it. And and wh where did this begin? Do you have any idea? I'm still I'm still diving into that research because my uh, my, my my students and I started talking about this this past week and it really is a hot topic because you know some people feel passionately about this topic from one end i feel passionately the other way um but pete i understand why because from from what I ha from what i have found is that just people in general are just really not not upset but just, they're just tired of being demanded more from work and not getting more in return. Now, in general, on average, that's what they're saying. And I know there's some organizations out there that operate that way, but that brush shouldn't be painted for the other organizations who do a really good job at paying people appropriately and painting and career pathing for the employees. So that's what's happening. I think it's partly also fueled by social media. You know, as soon as somebody says something, it goes around the world, comes back to you tenfold. And that's the world we're in. We know that. Yeah. You know? Um, so what I, I can think of lots of reasons why it's a bad idea yeah. as an employee. <laughs> yeah. Tell me why anyone thinks it's a good idea. What are the pros as, as you heard in your class this week? I don't know if I call it a pro. I don't know if that's what I'll call it. Maybe justification I, 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 for it is that so? So so that's what I will call it. What I will call is is people sticking it to the man, quote unquote, right? Okay. When they're saying, "Look, if 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 you want me to do all these extra work on all these things and not pay me for it, I'm just not going to do it and just do whatever my job description says." Now I've got to say this from an employee's perspective, an employee's perspective. I understand that rationale. If they have worked for an organization in the past, that's how that that's how they were treated. But employees would make a big mistake in assuming your next organization is going to do that, right? Because you cannot treat a future relationship based on your experience on previous relationships. I know that's what human nature teaches us, but I'll give you two two lines, Pete. Line one: If there is an employee that all they want to do is their job and their job alone and nothing else. They don't want to get promoted. They don't want to do anything else. Then I guess that's okay, right? Because you're doing exactly what you're being paid to do. But the second part of that, if you're an employee that wants to get promoted, I got to tell you, 
just doing the bare minimum what your job description implies is not going to it's not going to help you in your quest of moving up that career ladder it's just not going to happen no and and i i would assume and maybe that's a dangerous thing to do that anyone who um, chooses to operate in that manner has no intention of being promoted right i mean if you're if you're objective i mean this is just you know, logical, right? If you're, yeah. if your objective is to do the bare minimum in anything, you're going to get minimum results. And, and in that case, it certainly doesn't mean being at the top of the list of, of people who are um, going to be promoted anytime soon. Right. I mean, well, the employee who takes that approach has to know that. And, and I would assume that they're okay with that. See, I think the other way, man, I don't think, I don't think they're seeing how, I don't think they're being strategic enough and seeing how this is going to affect them in the long run. I just don't see it, right? I think this is more of a, I'm tired of what is happening. I'm tired of what I'm hearing because what I've noticed as well, this is other people who are taken on to this new trend without experiencing any of those things. They're just starting out in their career and they haven't had an opportunity to really go out there and showcase what they can do. So management can notice them and they can be promoted. I really think this is more one of those things that they're looking at five minutes in front of them instead of two years in front of them and that's gonna hurt them in the end. So from an employee's perspective, again, if you want to just do your job, not worry about moving up the career ladder, yeah, I guess that works, right? But this is not a pro, it's more of a, how you said it, a justification. Um, but for those of you who really want to move up, yeah, you've got to do a little bit something above and beyond to show that you've got what it takes to operate at that next level of leadership in that organization. So, you know, thinking about job descriptions, yeah. which is being in staffing for you know, a long time, I, I've thought about staff uh, job descriptions a lot over the years, and yeah. most of them are very poorly written. Oh yeah. <laughs> them are written by no offense, HR folks yeah, I know. <laughs> who, who check boxes you know, to meet certain requirements or um, laws that are in place. Not to say those things aren't important, but it's more of, um, you know, like I said, checking a box versus really considering what this person is going to be doing day to day, month yeah. to month in the individual role. You know, just, just something as simple as, um, uh, or as common rather as as saying you ha you have to be able to lift fifty pounds in 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 this job, right? We've all seen that in job descriptions mm -hmm. where no one's lifting anything, let alone fifty pounds. But it's a CYA thing, and and we're in a CYA world. We know that. Um, the other thing I'll say about job descriptions is my company, uh, when we are recruiting on behalf of another organization, one of our clients, we don't recruit based on job descriptions mm. because they very, very rarely reflect the actual job. And I've been saying that for a long time now and operating that way. So when I would, uh, when I was selling and calling on, on clients and managing accounts uh, years ago, if someone handed me a job description and said, here's what we're looking for. Now go you know, find this person mm. for us. I would put the job description aside and say, okay, now tell me who and what you really want. <laughs> and yep. the vast majority of the time, whatever that answer was, uh, did not closely resemble yep. uh, what was on the job description itself. And and that's because job descriptions are cumbersome. They're 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 tedious to do. They're they're no one likes to do them. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, you're correct there, sir. <laughs> no one likes to do it. The hiring manager doesn't like to do it. The HR person who's largely you know unqualified to do it. Not not because there's anything wrong with that individual. Or it's that they're not in the day to day of that seat it, it, as an HR uh, professional. Unless you only. Um, are responsible for one you know, particular area of the business, you're just not going to have that depth of knowledge. So it's it's understandable why the job descriptions are bad. It's not a good idea to base too much on what's you know specifically in there because you're going to be very disappointed and you're going to you know walk around carrying things for 50 pounds, 50 pounds all day. <laughs> But you, but you know what, you, you bring up a really good point because I can tell you from an HR perspective why job, uh, why those JDs are sometimes way out of date. Because, you know, here's from, from, from an HR point of view, here's how we put a JD together, right? 
we go sit with the a person doing the job for a few hours, ask him some questions about what kind of skill set does it take. I speak to the people who are the recipient of that work, and I speak to the leader who oversees the quality of the work. And based on that information, I put together a, a, a job description. Now, let's say I do that on Monday, right? Let's say Monday, September 9th or 1st, whatever. That's when I do it of this year. Between now and a year from now, the job is going to change. And every time that job changes, nobody calls HR and says, hey, by the way, we're adding this and we're adding that and this. So as time goes on, because some of these jobs, some of these JDs, they're about 10 years old. I mean, come on, what sure. kind of technology yep. has been uh, created in the past 10 years that this, that definitely changes the job. So I understand where you're coming from with that. So that's why I do the same thing. I ask for the JD and I also ask, okay, who specifically are you looking for? Because these are the quote unquote required um, credentials. Now, what are your preferred? And then let's put them together and see who we can find. Sure. And that, that makes sense. And mm -hmm. There are some organizations who do put significant thought and time and effort into their job descriptions, and they do accurately reflect the role. But in my experience, looking at thousands and thousands of job descriptions, I can tell you that that is generally not the case. So yeah. as an employee, don't base too much of your of, of how you're going to behave on what's in there. Um, it's not going to do you any favors. And I guess what I don't understand about this concept of quiet quitting or doing the bare minimum is why would you want to be in a role where that was your thought process? You know, that sounds yeah. like a really <laughs> unhealthy situation for both parties. Yeah. Um, if you have an employee as you know, who, who really j just doesn't want to be there, or like you said, wants to stick it to their employer, that's, that's not a good idea. I mean, there, there, are, there are lots of other jobs and lots of other places to work. Um, so why why would you stay in that situation? Did your did your class have any insight into that? Um, did that come up at all? Like why are you at this job where you're you're so miserable? Where you 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 want to actually you know do it as just as you know as poorly as you can get away with? That came up, but not from them, but from me. Okay, right? Because I posed that question out there. Because look, um, if 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 you're doing this for the sole purpose of pushing back, right? that tells me that you're not happy where you are. And if you decide, look, as an employee for any organization, um, we have it, two things are true. A, you decided to apply and accept the role. That's number one. That's a fact. And if you're still there, B, you've decided to continue to be there. And if there's all these things that are happening that you don't like, and then you start quiet quitting just because you saw it on TikTok, you saw it on social media, and it's a cool thing to do. I got to tell you, it's it, it's 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 going to hurt your career in the long run because if you're really upset about what's happening, yes, you can have a conversation with your leader, you can have a conversation with HR, but if they don't listen to you, as chances are sometimes they don't listen, then you have a decision to make. Either you stick around and you're okay with those parameters, or Almost every state in the United States is an at-will employment state, 49 of them. You have the opportunity to just get up and go somewhere else. But then the argument to that is, well, well there isn't anything else. Well, my argument is there is, Pete. Right. <laughs> There's a lot of other jobs out there, just maybe some that you may not have the skill set for, which is perfectly okay. Get that skill set that you need to get that position that you want. At some point, employees have to put in that elbow grease to 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 get that career that they want, but not every candidate sees that, unfortunately. Well, it, it, for any candidate who's listening, I'll tell you right now, there's a, there's lots of resources available yep. for you. There, this is there's never been a better time than right now. And I know some jobs data has just come out this week indicating that there's a slowdown in the market. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Uh, I, I'm telling you this above and beyond you know, anything we see there. There's never been a, a time in the history of the planet where it's easier to get a job, it's easier to get a, a good job, it's easier to um, to to get a virtual job, and to yes. have lots of opportunities where, with like you said, you said elbow grease, a little bit of effort, a little bit yeah. of training, and con you know, even if you have to take a little step back to take a big one forward, I encourage everyone go to zengig.com, look at our career guides on there. Look at the path to different professions that interest you. We list all the, you know, we have 
job openings all across the country. And you may be surprised if you haven't looked lately as, as to how many of those jobs are virtual in nature, how many organizations now will hire um, and train um, it, it, to have you know, employees long term that mm-hmm. maybe you know, don't have the specific skill set or education coming in. That's evolved a lot over the past two years because it's been such an employee's market. So take advantage of that. This podcast is called Finding Careers In. And so <laughs> it bothers me greatly to think that people are in jobs, you know, at any significant number of, of um, you know, at scale where they're so unhappy that they want to stick it to their employer or approach their job with less than their best effort. And yeah. that, that there it is. There it is. Is should be there shouldn't be anything quiet about that. That should be a huge wake up call and reason for you to you know, reconsider what you're doing every day. <laughs> you know, like you you have a choice every day you wake up, and if that's the one you're making, you're probably not very happy about how you're spending your waking hours. And and why let that continue? The, and and Pete, it with 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 um with organizations like Zengig, with the resources that are out there that Zengig's put together for these candidates, there, there really is no reason not to have these opportunities out. There really depends on what, 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 what you want to do for yourself. And here's, here's what I want to tell everybody listening. Um, go to, to reliable, credible sources like Zengig. All the information you need is there to get all the all the all, all the training, all the templates you need to get that job. Here's where you should not get your advice from: social media. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just the other um, one of the students brought up a TikTok. She sent it to me, just you know, as a joke. Where there was this one guy saying, "Here's the best way to um, to get your your work life balance back from corporate America," and he and then it showed him on a Zoom call. And it says 5 p.m. And the manager on the call said, hey, I just need a few more minutes. I got, you know, a few more things to to talk about. And the guy's like, nope, click and hangs up. Let me tell you, <laughs> I know why that was put out there, because there are some companies, right, that they, they, they may not respect people's time and they'll be there till 8 p.m. But a few minutes over, I mean, come on, you're not going to be able to be to be flexible enough to look, sometimes you go over on time and you want to show your boss and your team that you are a team player within reason, right? Extra 15 minutes, but at the minute mark, you're going to close your laptop and say goodbye. And look, you're going to be labeled. I'm just going to say it. You're going to be labeled as somebody who's not a team player, and that's just not a good look in corporate America. I mean, I know people are going to are going to challenge me on it. They're not going to like about what I just said, but at the end of the day, it's a fact. There has to be a a two way street of respect of people's time. Well, there there does, and and if you're again, situation is so unhealthy where you feel compelled to do that, find find something else to do yep. that because. You know, if you want to be technical about it, if we look back on, I haven't seen this, this TikTok video you're, you're describing, I'll send it to you. <laughs> but, but if we went, if we went back through that person's day, did they, did they look at personal messages at all during the day? Did they, did they get on social media that had something uh, uh, to, you know, that wasn't specifically related to their job? Mm-hmm. If so, if we're going to be that technical about it, then, then they should have been terminated on the spot the second those things happen. Yeah. Right now that's absurd. Of course, it's absurd. <laughs> so is so is stopping the very second that that um, you know five o'clock hits. So, if it, I don't know a better way to describe it other than to say it's just an all around unhealthy situation. If you have that kind of animosity yeah. um, towards your employer, now if your employees if your employer is taking advantage of you, you have to know what that is. But don't be so literal. That, yes. that, that's, that's, I think needs to be an important takeaway from this. If we're giving advice, um, don't, don't be so literal with that. Be, look for situations that are flexible. You know, it should be about people working with people. I mean, that's, yes, that is. Is, that's what it needs to be about. So if you're in a situation where you, um, you know, just, just, you know, really, really aren't happy end it as soon as possible. That's the best advice I could give to anyone who's quiet quitting. Well, you, you, you just said it, right? It's how did you choose to spend your waking hours? Happy, miserable? 
I'm not going to lie. I see some people who are really happy being miserable there Pete, <laughs> every week and hour, but it's uh, it, it's, you have to decide what you want to do with it. And there's resources out there. We can help you find that other position where you are going to be happy, where you'd be happy to stay that extra few minutes because you really care about the bottom line. There's a big difference with an employee caring about the bottom line, caring about the reason the organization exists versus somebody who's just working for somebody. Right. Yep. Because if 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 you care, if you create an environment. So now I'm talking from the organization perspective, if the organization creates an environment and where employees are happy to be there for the reason the organization exists. Let me tell you, nobody's looking at time. Nobody's looking at time. Everybody's is just focused on what needs to happen. But again, it's a two way street and you as a as a candidate and or employee have to decide what's best for you. And I'm venturing to guess because I don't want to speak for anybody. I'm venturing to guess that just being that and I'm going to say that petty God, you have it, it's so I don't know what is happening that that brings you joy. I don't know what is happening in your life that that you think that's going to help you in your career just being combative and you know what, more power to you. But for well, the people who really want to do something, <laughs> you, you, you've got to put in that elbow grease. Well, this yeah. concept of work, work-life balance, which which has, of course it's important, right? I mean, I have, you know, um, my youngest of, of four kids is 14, right? I look back and, and uh, you know, as my kids were growing up and and was fortunate that I took time when I could to, to spend with them. That is important. Right. Yep. But did I, did I have to stay late, you know, and do things for work because I was had ambitions and wanted to advance? Absolutely. And, and so balance means not doing to me, it means not doing any one thing all the time. Could I always t- go you know, be this chaperone on the field trip? Mm. No. Okay. No, but did I on occasion? Yes. That's balance. Right. Yeah. I, I saw a post on LinkedIn the other day because I didn't know, even know what this phrase was two weeks ago. And I, and I've <laughs> seen it, you know, a dozen times in the past you know, week and a half or so, but the, uh, the, it was a, it was a, it was a post by a recruiter who was saying, I'm, I'm all for quiet quitting. Um, you know, don't do anything more than your employer pays you to do. You don't have to, to, to do this stuff and we need to bring work-life balance back. And, and it was, you know, really talking about work-life balance a lot. And I thought, man, you know, a hundred years ago, we, from sunup to sundown, you know, most, wow. of, most of, uh, most of the humans on the planet were fighting for survival all day, you know, foraging for food you know, trying to find shelter. Um, and, you know, and, and much of the world still lives like that, where, you know, throughout mm. the entire day, their waking hours, they're trying to survive. So let's just know that all things are relative, right? When it comes to work-life balance, it doesn't mean you can't work until 5.30 or 6. Yeah. And, that, and that, listen, that's not going to be a popular thing for a lot of people to hear, Um but we're speaking from an HR perspective, from a business perspective, from an employee perspective, from someone who wants you know, to be successful. And I promise you, no one wants more life work, work life balance than I do with my family and my kids yeah. over the years. But I also know that um, success doesn't happen by accident. Yep. And if you want to achieve things, it's never going to happen by doing the bare minimum. That's right. That's right. And um, I don't think I saw that LinkedIn post, but you said a recruiter posted that? A recruiter posted. <laughs> yes. I mean, folks, here's here's what I'm saying about making sure you don't, you know, uh, uh, shoot yourself in the foot, right? Because for, look, from an HR point of view, for a recruiter putting that on there, I would want to have a conversation with that recruiter, not for what he or she posted, but why, do he, why, why does he or she believe that? Let's have a conversation. Let's try to fix it, right? But I don't think, I, I think giving that advice out there is really wrong, right? Because that gives the wrong impression from somebody who's supposed to be the face of the organization. <laughs> so I'm wondering what leadership thought about it. So now I'm going to look it up. I'm sorry. It's, it's, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm sticking to that. That kind of got to me. But you see, that's what I'm talking about with social media. I, I don't want people out there listening um, to just one thing about a specific subject and oh that's what I'm going to do because Pete that's what I'm starting to see 
Yep. I'm starting to see people who don't have that much work experience taking the stance just because they want to follow that trend. And I'm just saying it's be careful what you do out there. Be careful what you put on social media because you, you may think one way right now, but as we get older, we evolve, we get smarter, we, we, we become wiser and you may have a different stance of that later on. And this is going to come back and bite you. Yeah. So and think just, about that right now. That's, that's really important. And I think that's a good way to conclude this because yeah. it it's, it's a message. that's not what everyone may want to hear, but we truly believe it's what they need to hear, which is why yeah. we're talking about that this today, that's which right. is why that's what you shared uh, with your students in class who, who are, you know, aspiring HR professionals who, who right. want to be in this world. And so we'll always give you the advice that uh, we think is necessary, even if it's not popular. So, um, so quiet quitting, don't do it. Actual quitting where necessary, do it. That's uh, right. They, that's there not, we go. That not, there's the phrase, that. Pete. There's the phrase. Yeah, it's it's you know what? If you if you're not that happy, don't quite just quit. Right. Just quit. That that is that you know what? I'm gonna tell that to my students because next week we're talking about quiet firing, the opposite of that, which that also came up. Uh, but we could talk about that next week. But I ain't gonna tell them that as far as the about having an active role in your career by quitting actively when just things don't go your way. That's the best way to end this. That's awesome. Yeah, well, you, you can make a, a logo, uh, just just don't do it logo for your class. <laughs> I might get sued. <laughs> <laughs> I might get sued for that. <laughs> All right, Ricky, well, thanks for joining today. Um, now I'm going to have you back on um, you know, frequently so we can talk about these controversial um, subjects, even even those that we think probably shouldn't be. But um, th this one is a, is a hot topic. Yes, sir. It, hopefully we helped uh, lead towards it going away sooner than later. I think it should. It needs to. And if you decide to quit loudly the right way, zingeg.com. You've got all the resources there for you to, to help you with interviews, resumes, all these tips that are out there in one place. Trust me, you're not going to be disappointed. That information in there was curated by a lot of leadership, HR pros that have your best interests in mind. Zingeg.com. Trust me, you're not gonna you're not going to be disappointed. All the career advice is out there. So thanks for listening today. Drive safe and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye. Um.